Welcome to the Oakles channel, thanks for watching today, and let's take a look at an indie game called Tuna the Cat. The game is developed by Fifth Wheel Games, which is a one-man team, and he reached out to me to review a demo of the game before it's released, and I'm always happy to work with small indie game developers like this. Now, as far as I know, this is the only game that Fifth Wheel Games has going on at the moment. On their webpage, they have nothing else listed, so as far as I know, Tuna the Cat is the only game they have in development. And I'm not going to lie, as I'm looking at their website, their uh, logo does remind me a little bit of a Nick Cave and the Birthday Party album called Junkyard. I don't know, there's probably no connection, but I couldn't help but notice, and maybe they're hearkening back to a older era of music. I don't know, could be totally me. But regardless, Tune of the Cat is a 2.5D platformer where the core goal is just simply to survive to the end of every level. You only have 200 seconds to do it, but avoiding all of the obstacles to get there safely can be quite a challenge. The levels are littered with a variety of traps, mushroom slugs, mutant lizards, robots, bees, and many more enemies as you go. You can take out the enemies by jumping on them or sliding into them, but there's no way to know which enemies are going to require which, except for trial and error, which could be a little bit on the uh, frustrating side. The game is an overall though, does start off fairly easy, but by the end of level 2, the traps are getting more annoying as you progress. For example, like you get to this little area here with all these trampolines, you have to avoid these little bees that are going up and down as you bounce on the trampoline, and when you finally get to the end of that, if you aren't paying close attention, the little platform will catapult you back, no pun intended, back to the beginning of the trampolines to do it all over again, and these are just sort of the annoying areas that you get uh, pretty frustrated with, but that's also the nature of these type of games that are the goal to finish the level. They're going to throw little traps in as you go. Also in these levels, there are items that you can get for invincibility, boost refills, and continues, and it's all just junk food, such as like hamburgers and hot dogs and pizza. But the main item that you're trying to collect are these 25 tacos that are hidden throughout the entire level in order to achieve the extra life. And this does add a little bit of an extra aspect as you're trying to find all the tacos because some of them are hidden pretty well. But of all the foods you can get in the game or collect in the game, never once is tuna mentioned or tuna fish or tuna fish sandwich or tuna in a can. Tuna nothing is mentioned inside the game. Perhaps they should have just simply called the game Taco to Cat because that would at least explain his love for tacos and the need to collect 25 of them in every single level. But speaking of that, there is no story to the game and it could use a little introduction because the creator is obviously taking some time to create somewhat unique areas and a small story would go a long way on investing the player more into the world that's been created and crafted here. I mean, just use some of the little animations from the game itself with the little 3D models here, make a little cutscene with some of the characters or perhaps use some of the more traditional animation styles that are displayed on the game over or to continue screen. Obviously the animation skills are there, just use one of these to simply get the player more invested in the story that's being created. But as you're playing through the game, the controls are pretty straightforward. You have a jump button, a slide button, and a dash button. However, you only get one dash before needing to refill it by finding a pizza. And I find it sort of annoying that you only get one dash because unlimited dashes would make the game significantly better and would allow the player to have more freedom on how to explore the levels. It would also open up more types of puzzles that could be included by the developer. At the moment of this recording, the game does feel a little bit limited due to its own rule that is put into place with the single dash. I would really like to see the dash opened up a little bit more. And like I said, this is the company's very first game and it does go with the territory for a developer to create a pretty basic experience on their very first time around, but basic games can still find a follow if the charm is still there. Just look at indie games like Super Kiwi 64 or Cave of Wonders. These games are very basic. They're made by very small teams, sometimes a single person, but they still bring a feeling of nostalgia to players and attract a small player base with the charm that the game presents. I honestly feel that if a little bit more work is put into making the characters a little more charming or a little more relatable and maybe having a fun or wacky backstory, then players will be more than willing to work through what is otherwise a fairly basic platformer. The developer does seem open to suggestions, and since the game is still in development, I do highly recommend giving the game a download, give it a try, and then let Fifth Wheel Games know your feedback so fans of this particular genre can help create a memorable experience for all players as well as giving a memorable game for the developer to put out for the fan base. But as it stands in this pre-release demo, the world is a bit empty, the charm is a little bit limited, but the platforming is on par with these 2.5D games where the goal is simply to get to the end of the level. For a first time developer, the aspect alone of creating the game, much less a game that's completely functional, is a feat. And I'd love to see fresh developers take on new projects like this, and this game definitely does have promise, but if the game doesn't change much more before release, it would be best suited for the mobile market. But clearly, Fifth Wheel Games has the basics down, and future games, and even this game, can only grow from here. But if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel, check out my other video reviews listed up above, and as always, go out there, find a great game to play, and just simply have a great rest of the day. And also, if you're a small developer and you want me to review your game, give some basic feedback, or help promote it to find a bit larger fan base, let me know that in the comments down below as well, or reach out to me, and I'll be happy to feature your game on the channel as well.